This is the American Forces Network, Europe. Make up wire wheels, no flat tires, no air pressure, no worries. John Young and Charlie Buke running ahead of schedule down on the surface of the moon. Their lunar rover unstowed. Uh, all preparations being made. Everything go for their first moonwalk. You've been listening to live coverage of Apollo 16, exploration of Descartes. This is Ted Field with Art Thompson at Cape Kennedy. Moon surface, preparing to get the moon rover in action for some lunar exploration. Radio providing the first reactions of the moonwalkers. live coverage of the first lunar exploration by Apollo 16 astronauts John Young and Charles Duke. Stay tuned to AFN for further coverage of the Apollo 16 mission. Should any problems develop either in the lunar lander or in the command ship, AFN will switch to live coverage as soon as it's made available to us by the major stateside networks. This is the American Forces Network Europe. 31 minutes past the hour of 6 o'clock. We continue now with an interlude of recorded music. It's 7 o'clock in Central Europe. The Apollo 16 astronauts are on the moon, and American warplanes have bombed targets within 80 miles of Hanoi. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, this is Paul Macko in Frankfurt. Astronauts John Young and Charles Duke have become the ninth and 10th Americans to walk on the lunar surface. Young stepped out of the moon about one minute before 6 o'clock Central European time, and Duke followed a few minutes later. Both astronauts expressed amazement at the size of the rocks in the lunar field where they landed. They then began taking equipment from the storage area of the lander. Their first project is to set up a nuclear-powered geophysical observatory. This moonwalk, the first of three the astronauts have scheduled, will last for about seven hours. AFN will provide further coverage of the Apollo 16 mission, if any significant developments occur, and if the coverage is made available to us by the stateside network. It's 8 o'clock Central European time. Astronauts Young and Duke continue their first lunar expedition. AFN News. From the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, I'm Dan Allen in Frankfurt. Apollo 16 astronauts John Young and Charles Duke have completed about one third of their first lunar expedition. The two astronauts are expected to continue their first moonwalk until about midnight Central European time. Their prime project during the initial moon exploration is to set up a nuclear powered geophysical observatory as well as get samples of rock and soil from the lunar highlands. AFN will air further coverage of the Apollo 16 mission as it's made available to us by the stateside network. America it's 9 o'clock in Central Europe. The Apollo 16 astronauts are about halfway through their first lunar expedition. AFN News. From the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, this is Jan Wood, AFN News reporting. Apollo 16 astronauts John Young and Charles Duke are enthusiastically exploring the lunar highlands in the first of their three planned moon walks. Young and Duke were the ninth and tenth Americans to set foot on the moon. Young and Duke, who almost had their landing canceled because of trouble with the command ship yesterday, 
For awestruck by the boulders strewn moonscape of mountains, craters, and desolate desert like terrain. It's 10 o'clock in Central Europe. The Apollo 16 astronauts near the end of their first lunar exploration. American warplanes again strike targets deep inside North Vietnam, and the Labor Department reports a slowdown in the cost of living during March. The 10 o'clock report, an expanded summary of world developments compiled from the wires of the AP and UPI, with reports from the major American networks, and comment. Good evening, this is Paul Macko in Frankfurt. America's Apollo 16 astronauts have completed about two-thirds of their first exploration of the lunar surface. Astronauts John Young and Charles Duke have been busy setting up the equipment to be used during their exploration, as well as taking a few moments from their scientific work for such down-to-earth pleasures as taking pictures of each other in front of their lunar lander. An antenna problem on the lunar module Orion prevented a television camera from relaying pictures to Earth of the astronauts' first steps on the moon. However, the astronauts were able to get the camera operating about an hour after their moonwalk began. Young and Duke quickly set about their main tasks of deploying their four-wheel moon buggy and starting work on erecting a nuclear-powered science station. The station will relay data back to Earth for at least a year on such things as radiation and solar wind. The prime purpose of their expeditions will be to find evidence that volcanoes once erupted beneath the lunar surface, forming many of the moon's rugged areas. The two moonwalkers have two more lunar explorations planned for later this weekend. AFN's next live Apollo 16 coverage will be aired in about 40 minutes at 20 minutes before 11 o'clock. <laughs>
Central Europe, Army Secretary Frelke takes action following investigation of the death of 33 Americans at Firebase Mary Ann last year. AFN News and Sports Roundup, a summary of developments from the wires of the AP and UPI. First, the news. Good evening, this is John Wood, AFN News reporting. Wednesday astronauts Charles Duke and John Young have reached Flag Crater on their first exploration with the lunar rover. Flag Crater is one of the major stops on the first EVA, and they are now collecting samples from around the crater. To study ocean pollution, he came out and showed statistics that, that showed certain areas of the ocean as being, uh, has, that have decreased in the amount of life. People don't realize that uh, the productivity of the oceans, where all the food and, uh, that we get from the oceans uh, originates, is along the continental shelf. The shallow parts of the sea. The very shallow parts of the sea, which, as compared to the rest of the ocean, are very small areas and simply line the, the continents. And this, of course, is true because they have more oxygen and flavor. We're going to break away and rejoin our program in progress because nothing is uh, going on of uh, newsworthy importance right now. So we rejoin Pete Smith in progress. It's 12 midnight in Central Europe. Here's a summary of late world news from the AFN newsroom and the wires of the AP and UPI with a closing report on American markets provided by Beach and Company. Astronauts John Young and Charles Duke roam the volcanic highlands of the moon on Friday, setting out an American flag, placing experimental equipment, and cursing a broken wire that ruined one valuable experiment. Young and Duke were on the lunar surface about 6 p.m. Friday, Central European time, and immediately went to work, and they had the most chatter of any of the Apollo moon landing missions. They moved away from their landers, setting up science stations, drilling holes, and collecting samples. They are due to end their first spacewalk at 1.22 a.m. Central European time, stow away their gear, and get some rest before Saturday's scheduled seven-hour lunar excursion. It's 1 o'clock in Central Europe. A North Vietnamese regiment routes government defenders at Firebase Delta in the Central Highlands. <laughs> AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good afternoon, this is Paul Macko in Frankfurt. Sixteen moonwalkers finished their first lunar excursion with two intriguing white rocks, but minus a million-dollar experiment. Astronauts John Young and Charles Duke We'll head for the feature called Stone Mountain on their second trip in the lunar buggy later today. The moonwalk has been rescheduled to begin at 5.44 p.m. Central European time. Yesterday, the drove around their landing site on the Descartes Plateau. Among their rock samples were two white crystalline rocks that scientists think may provide a clue to the moon's origin. 
A heat flow probe experiment was knocked out when Young tripped over a cable while setting it up. Ground Control is trying to devise some way to repair the cable, but holds out little hope of success. Welcome to your Saturday Weekend World. Four hours of music, news, sports, comedy, and features for weekend listening. Today, Army Sergeant Milt Kemp here in Frankfurt talks with soul man Wilson Pickett. From Munich, specialist Paul McGowan talks with British song star Irene Schirer. From Berlin, specialist John Prophet presents a very interesting one-man band. A look at the world of acid rock with specialist Joe DeLucio in Bremerhaven. Army Sergeant John O'Connor in Munich files a report dealing with Library Week, books, and reading. Back here in Frankfurt, Specialist Jim Kirby presents Uriah Heap. And in part, that's our Saturday lineup. I'm Army Sergeant Monty Jones, and at 1 minute 15 seconds past the hour, Paul Macko with the latest news. Mission Control at Cape Kennedy reports this afternoon's planned moonwalk by astronauts John Young and Charles Duke has been set back more than an hour. Ground officials decided to allow the two men to sleep a bit longer than had been scheduled. The extra sleeping time means that the second of three lunar excursions now is scheduled to begin at 5.44 Central European time. Weekend World News headlines on the hour compiled from the wires of the AP and UPI. Seen astronauts continue their scientific exploration of the lunar surface this afternoon with study in a mountain range about three miles from their lunar lander. AFN expects to wear live coverage of the start of the second lunar exploration as part of Weekend World starting at approximately 5.45. Astronauts are making final preparations now for their second lunar exploration, which is scheduled to begin in just a few seconds. Astronauts Young and Duke were in good spirits when they awoke today, both saying they got seven hours sleep and are ready to begin their second day of moonwalking in a mountain range where scientists hope to find about the lunar mountains and how they were formed. In just a few seconds, we will join the United Press International Audio Radio Service to begin more coverage of the Apollo mission. Now to UPI. Ground control gave them a couple of hours extra sleep, but they were up early anyway. Then they moved through breakfast and the morning toast keeping chore, and they're going to depressurize the lunar lander Orion ahead of schedule in preparation for their second seven-hour expedition on the moon's surface. That expedition will take them about two and one-half miles across the boulder-strewn landscape to Stone Mountain, which towers more than 1,600 feet above their landing site. The landing site itself is high in the lunar highlands, some 7,000 feet higher than the first Apollo landing. So today, if they can find a way up the slopes of Stone Mountain, Young and Duke may stand at the highest point in the moon, yet reached by man. They're just about to depressurize the cabin for the second moonwalk. We'll start in a very few minutes. This is live coverage of Apollo 16. This is Ted Shields at Cape Kennedy. Grab the bread, burn and set, get ahead, the chance of a lifetime, get into your school, G.I. Bill, thanks for going green, you 
don't have to go to college on the GI Bill. You can go to a trade school or take on the job training. You can even pay for correspondence courses with the GI Bill. If it's a better way of life you're looking for, let the GI Bill help pay the way. It pays in more ways than one. The chance of a lifetime. Get into your school. GI Bill. John Young and Charlie Duke are running pressure checks on those life-saving suits they'll wear on their second moon expedition, which is scheduled to start shortly. Once they're sure that the suits are all right, that there are no leaks of that life-saving oxygen, then they'll start to depressurize the cabin of the lunar lander Orion, and a few minutes after that, they'll leave on their second seven-hour expedition on the surface of the moon. All right, do you think uh, Art Thompson is with me? Art, do you think they're going to depressurize uh, very shortly? They've just been given a go for depressurization by Mission Control. Let's listen in. This is Apollo Control at 142 hours, 51 minutes. The crew at the present time uh, beginning to depressurize the lunar module uh, in preparation for opening the hatch and descending to the uh, surface at Descartes. I would like to run over briefly some of the objectives of this uh, extravehicular activity. The prime objective will be to get to Stone Mountain. Uh, this is a mountain uh, uh, which is about uh, 1,660 feet or so above the uh, site at Descartes where the LEM landed. Uh, they will hope to get about uh, 750 feet or around 250 meters up on the side of this uh, mountain. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to sample the uh, uh, terraces that have been observed in the photography of this mountain, and which the crew has also reported seeing out the window of the lunar module, uh, seeing from the surface. Uh, it's believed that these terraces may be related to uh, uh, volcanic flows, lava flows, and uh, uh, these lava flows are called the uh, Descartes Formation. Uh, they do differ from the Cayley plain area, which the crew was sampling in the EVA yesterday. Uh, they'll also at uh, Station 8 uh, be sampling ejecta from South Ray Crater, and at this point we expect to see many uh, large blocks, uh, blocky ejecta from that crater. Uh, they'll be may, uh, running experiments on these blocks to help uh, uh, date the blocks. Uh, determine when the blocks were laid down on the lunar surface and by inference uh, to get a time at which South Ray Crater was formed. Uh, also, uh, because of the interesting magnetometer readings that were obtained yesterday, uh, we expect a magnetometer reading to be added at uh, Station 4 or Station 5 uh, on Stone Mountain. Uh, one thing that we'll probably observe on this EVA are a large number of blocks, uh, some of them perhaps uh, up to 10 or 20 feet across. And we're now uh, at uh, 142 hours, uh, 52 minutes. Point five uh, pounds per square inch, and it started the portable life support system clock. Uh, that clock started at seven hours. It'll count down towards zero, the uh, planned time for this extravehicular activity. We're now showing six hours, 58 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting downward uh, on that clock. They've now started the, to depress the cabin of the lunar lander Orion in preparation for going out on the second moonwalk. Have you heard, as you've heard, they'll head for Stone Mountain, and they'll try and make it 750 feet up the side of that mountain. That, of course, all depends on what uh, sort of uh, surface conditions they encounter, the size of the boulders, the size of the craters, and naturally how the little lunar rover manages to get along on the... Uh, a slope like that. This is the sort of thing that they haven't tried out yet. John Young and Charlie Duke all suited up, almost ready to go out on moonwalk number two. This is live coverage of Apollo 16. This is Ted Shields at Cape Kennedy. Come and sing a simple song of freedom. Sing it like you've never sang before. Freedom is a right of the people. Voting is a privilege that gives us that right. Members of
of the armed forces who are legal residents of Guam. Back to the exploration of the mountains of the moon by John Young and Charlie Duke. Suited up in the cabin of the lunar lander Orion, almost ready to step out. All right, Thompson, I think they've got the pressure down and started the clock. Is that correct? That's right. They've started the clock that'll be counting down. It started at seven hours, which is how much time they've been allowed for the second moon walk. And uh, it started at 32 minutes past the hour. So the rest of the oxygen is being dumped overboard, and uh, pretty soon the pressure inside the spacecraft will be down to zero. They'll open the hatch. And we'll see a repeat of what's happened uh, several times before already. And that is uh, Commander Young will leave first. Charlie Duke will stay behind and pass some equipment out to him. And then he too will come down the ladder and we'll be off for the second exploration of the Descartes region of the moon today. We should be hearing some conversation. It's kind of muddy. The communication again today are not too good with the spacecraft because the antenna that normally could be aimed toward Earth is not operating. And so they're having to use a secondary system. So the communications are just a wee bit muddy, but let's see what we can pick out of it.
giving Young directions on where to reposition that camera now for the uh, best sun angles to get the kind of pictures that they want. John Young is being asked to move the forward UV camera in order to get it out of the sun. Uh, yesterday, Young also reported when he set the camera at the desired position, it was rather than pointing at the proper uh, area of the sky, it was uh, pointed at the lunar module port. This should also uh, uh, help that sort of a problem. This is the first time they've used this camera on the lunar surface. First time it's gone along on an Apollo expedition. Both Young and Duke now are out of their spaceship, down on the ground, working away, setting up uh, the ultraviolet camera and other equipment, getting ready for powering up the lunar rover, the dune buggy, and starting out for Stone Mountain, uh, some two and a half miles away. And they're going to try and get 750 feet up its slope. This is live coverage of Apollo 16. This is Ted Shields at Cape Kennedy. Nevertheless, recently some social researchers had some people pretend they were ill on the New York subway just to see how many other people would come to their aid. You know what happened? Scores of people volunteered to help with someone who was sick. Would you? This is a question that's as valid in small towns as in big cities. Every day, everywhere, we have opportunities to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. The trouble is, in this hurried, harried world, People seem to have lost touch. How do you get back in touch? It takes real practice to love your neighbor. But if you start a chain of love in the world, there's no telling where it will end. And there's no better time to start than today. A message from Religion in American Life. John Young and Charlie Duke on the surface of the moon, ready to set out for their second moonwalk. Art Thompson, are they, have they started in on the uh, lunar rover yet? Haven't gotten quite that far in their plans yet, Ted. Uh, John Young is still resetting. He's moving the uh, ultraviolet camera that they left set up on the moon surface uh, overnight. Uh, actually, overnight here on the Earth. It uh, was sitting in the sun all night <laughs> for them. And so uh, he moved it back into the shadow to help it get the best possible pictures. And once that's done, the uh, young will turn on the uh, TV camera that's mounted on the lunar rover, get it warmed up, and then they'll begin to load up the lunar rover for the trip to the first uh, station where they're going to be sampling things today. That's not Georgia, that's Stone Mountain Moon.
you just go to mode three on that, then we'll leave it there. And we'll control it from here. Okay, we have a picture. Okay. Okay, John, with those, uh, that azimuth and elevation, look through the Earth's sight and center it on the Earth, then give us the azimuth you're reading, and from that we'll calculate a new target. Picking up a hand camera and pointing it and taking a snapshot of the weight and kids. Okay, fine.
the whole focus of the Apollo program has been to get uh, geological samples from every type of terrain that is found on the moon. Uh, Apollo 11 landed in one of the mare or seas of the moon, a very smooth, flat area. And they've been progressing in each flight toward a little bit more difficult and rugged terrain. And now they're in the lunar badlands, so to speak, or they will be today. We might find it a little tough going for the lunar rover because the surface is not expected to be too smooth. They're going to see some large boulders for the first time. They've seen rocks and partially buried boulders, but they're expecting to see some today just lying out on the surface on the hilly regions and take some samples from those. A very exciting discovery yesterday was a rock similar to one that was picked up on uh, oh, the Apollo 14 head, the Genesis rock. The north of Said, as I remember. Yes, and that is very exciting to a geologist because it's the oldest rock that, sample that has been returned from the moon, and uh, they're hoping to get another look at some more samples like that when 16 returns to Earth. Uh, they're just about to set out on that leg that Art Thompson has been describing. Very, a lot, a few lots. It's 10 o'clock in Central Europe. The Apollo 16 astronauts continue their second moon walk. AFM News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, this is Jan Wood, AFM News reporting. Apollo 16 astronauts John Young and Charles Duke had trouble finding the primary objective of their second moon trip today, pieces of bedrock from the Descartes bedrock formation. Scientists believe that Ecarte Bedrock will supply some secrets of the moon, its formation, and history. The search began in the vicinity of Stone Mountain, about two and one-half miles south of the Apollo 16 landing site. The astronauts first stopped about 750 feet up the 1,600-foot mountain and did some sample gatherings. But Young and Duke said it was difficult to tell if the stones they found were from the moon's bedrock. After moving to another location, the astronauts dug again, and they seemed pleased at the stones they found. The second moonwalk ends at approximately 12.30 midnight. Two plus three, Sergeant Baker. That's permanent. Yeah. Okay, that's two plus three, Baker, coming open. Mm -hmm. Okay, your dry power, left rear and right rear is in bed plus C. You don't have any dry power. Das 
Lese ein, ein Ablesewert und oh, jetzt Ablesewert muss erst mit entsprechenden Faktoren auf der Erde hier multiplizieren, um jetzt unmittelbar die Temperatur anzunehmen. Die Temperaturen dürften sich im Bereich von 60, 70 Grad bewegen. Die Oberflächentemperaturen werden diese Batterien, die ja nun lebenswichtig sind für das Fahrzeug, werden nicht beeinflusst durch die äußeren Temperaturen, die es im Grunde ja äh, in der Form nicht gibt, wie wir sie hier auf der Erde haben. Sicherlich werden sie durch die Temperatur, die im Inneren der Batterie herrscht, äh, herrscht ist natürlich ein besonders wichtiger Faktor und daher wird auch die Temperatur der Batterien ganz genau überwacht. Wenn die Temperatur sehr niedrig ist, ist natürlich die Leistungsfähigkeit äh, der Batterie sehr gering, wie wir ja alle auch vom, vom Winter her wissen. Ja, ich war nicht sehr schwach eben äh, davon, oder ich wollte ausdrücken, die Temperatur auf dem Mond, die Außentemperatur, wie weit hat sie einen Einfluss auch auf die Batterie? Die Temperatur äh, entwickelt, die Batterie entwickelt natürlich, wenn Strom durch äh, sie fliegt, keine Wärme. Und sie strahlt auch Wärme natürlich dann auf die, auf die Umgebung aus. Und es wird auch Wärme von der Sonne auf sie Es steht nach einiger Zeit ein Gleichgewicht. Und es hängt davon ab, wie viel Strom fließt und ob die Batterie zum Schatten ist oder voll in der Sonne. Aber im Allgemeinen besteht jetzt momentan nur die Gefahr, dass sie zu warm wird. Wenn wir schon von Temperaturen sprechen, Herr Dr. Gerhard, welche Temperaturen herrschen denn Außentemperaturen im Augenblick da oben, etwa im Schatten und in der Sonne? Außentemperaturen in dem Sinne, wie wir sie hier auf der Erde kennen, gibt es nicht, sondern nur Temperatur, die eine bestimmte Materie annimmt. Und es ist so, dass die Temperaturen auf der Mondoberfläche von minus 120, minus 130 bis plus 100 Grad, 110 Grad schwanken. Und diese Schwankungen sind natürlich äh, sehr plötzlich, denn wenn die Sonne weg ist, innerhalb weniger einer halben bis dreiviertel Stunde äh, springt die Temperatur sehr stark und das bringt auch ein der mit sich schon, wie ich schon vorher gesagt habe, Banken, diese Steine so brüchig sind. Ja, im Augenblick sind wir immer noch dabei, wieder Steinproben zu verladen, in die Beutel, in den Wagen und es geht gleich wieder los. Zwischendurch werden auch die Zwischendurch werden natürlich auch die Verbrauchsstoffe in den Anzügen überprüft, also Feuer, Kühlwasser und Wasserstoff. Und die sehen sehr gut aus und wie wir schon gesagt haben, also wird wahrscheinlich die Aufenthaltszeit für die Astronauten um 20 Minuten verlängert werden. Die Aufgabe, die die Astronauten hier jetzt zu erfüllen haben, ist, dass sie diese beiden äh, verschiedenen Formationen studieren sollen, also diese geologischen Einheiten und so. Das eine ist, äh, gebildet durch die Kelly Plains, das ist eine typische Erscheinung, ein Hochland, das man auf, dem Mond, auf der Vorderfläche des Mondes circa äh, 7% erhalten, äh, 7% Preisigkeit antrifft. Das andere ist die, die Gratformation, also eine Graterformation im Ausläuf von großen Kratern, das ist auch mit ungefähr 4% Preisigkeit auf dem Mond. Das ist sehr wichtig, wenn man von diesen typischen geologischen Einheiten eine Proben, Steinproben und natürlich Aufnahmen bekommt, denn dadurch kriegt man ein ziemlich gutes Durchschnittsbild, wie Hochland und diese Hochplateau-Ebenen auf dem Mond aufgebaut sind. Hören wir noch einen Moment in den Sprechverkehr ein.
And it's past 11 o'clock in Central Europe and in the U.S. In West Berlin, thousands marched to protest the Vietnam War. <laughs> AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. John Wood, AFN News, reporting. Fifteen astronauts John Young and Charles Duke have used an electric car to travel halfway up the 1,600-foot stone mountain on the lunar surface. It's the highest point on the moon ever visited by man, and Duke terms it a spectacular sight. During today's outing, the two are trying to find ancient lunar rocks and volcanic remnants to add to what they gathered yesterday during their first expedition on the lunar surface. Yesterday, they found the two white rocks, which scientists think could be volcanic, or possibly relate to the formation of the early lunar crust. After more moon exploration tomorrow, Young and Duke blast away from the moon surface, and after a link-up with the command module piloted by Thomas Mattingly, the trio heads home on Monday. It's 1 o'clock in Central Europe. The Apollo 16 astronauts wind up their second day on the moon. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good morning, this is Jan Wood, AFN News reporting. The Apollo 16 astronauts have completed another exciting day on the moon. They drove their lunar rover halfway up a 1,600-foot mountain to the highest point on the moon ever visited by man, but scientists are puzzled because the astronauts found only a few crystalline rocks. Geologists had expected the surface of Stone Mountain to be covered with ancient crystalline rocks of clearly volcanic origin. At Mission Control, Dr. Robin Brick said it's difficult to understand why John Young and Charles Drake, or Charles Duke make it, had not found more of the white rocks, which would be numerous in an area of once high volcanic activity. Young and Duke ended their lunar lander for a rest period about 15 minutes ago. It's 10 o'clock in Central Europe. Unlock under attack from four sides. AFN News from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good morning, Gary Bartell reporting. Climbed a mountain in their lunar rover yesterday to the highest level on the moon ever known to man. The astronauts were pleased with what they accomplished, but disappointed in not finding more crystalline rock. Geologists had expected the surface of Stone Mountain might be strewn with the ancient crystalline of clearly volcanic origin, but the astronauts found only a few crystalline rocks on that mountain, a fact that puzzled geologists on Earth. The astronauts are now in an eight-hour sleep period. It's noon in Central Europe. The Apollo 16 astronauts are in the middle of a sleep period prior to their third excursion on the lunar surface. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good afternoon, this is Paul Macko in Frankfurt. Astronauts John Young and Charles Duke start their third and final lunar surface explorations later today. Young and Duke now are taking an eight-hour rest period in their lunar lander. Yesterday, the Apollo 16 astronauts spent a busy day of rock collecting and explorations high in the lunar Descartes mountain region. They drove the lunar lander up Stone Mountain to the highest point on the moon ever visited by man. Geologists are puzzled, and the Apollo 16 astronauts are disappointed that they're not finding more crystalline rocks on the moon, those that would indicate the ancient volcanic origin of the Descartes highlands they're exploring. One possibility is that the rocks are so small that the astronauts can't see them. But, as one scientist puts it, if you go to the lunar highlands for the first time, no matter what you bring back, you can't lose. It's one o'clock in Central Europe. Communist forces have renewed their massive assault against Anne Locke, and it's the third and final lunar exploration today for the Apollo 16 astronauts. AFN News and Sports Roundup, a summary of developments from the wires of the AP and UPI. First, the news. Good afternoon, this is Paul Macko in Frankfurt. 16 astronauts John Young and Charles Duke have been given an extra 25 minutes to sleep 
and a promise it won't cut into today's third and last exploration of the lunar surface. Because of radio static, the moon explorers contacted Mission Control a half hour after their scheduled rest period was supposed to begin. Mission Control assured them the problem will be corrected and changed the wake-up time to 2 o'clock this afternoon. Meanwhile, astronaut Thomas Mattingly orbiting above the moon also is coming to the end of his rest period. Duke and Young are expected to start their third lunar exploration at about 5.30 this afternoon. Yesterday, the two astronauts rode their moon rover through rock-strewn slopes and craters and up the side of Stone Mountain in the Descartes Highlands. During their expedition, the moon rover lost its tilt-reading device, a rear fender, part of its rear wheel drive, and finally almost lost its entire navigational system. The losses forced Young to follow his tire tracks back to the lunar lander Orion on the Cayley Plains. Meanwhile, scientists in Houston have abandoned attempts to repair a million-dollar heat flow experiment rated as Apollo 16's top priority scientific instrument. The experiment, designed to give scientists a thermal picture of the moon's surface, was lost when Young tripped over one of its connecting wires and broke it. Good afternoon, and welcome to your Sunday Weekend World. From Frankfurt, your Sunday Weekend World. Today, specialist Paul McGowan in Munich talks to a member of the singing group, the Straubs, in London. From Bremerhaven, names from Nashville with Army Sergeant Dave Stewart from New York. The Tonight Show from Las Vegas, Johnny Mathis on stage. And from WRC Radio in Washington, the Joy Boys Radio. In part, that's our Sunday lineup. I'm Army Sergeant Monty Jones, and at one minute past the hour, the latest news. Communist forces and... Seen astronauts are scheduled to be awakened at this hour to prepare for their third and final exploration of the lunar surface. Today's scientific work on the moon is slated to start shortly before 5 o'clock Central European time. John Young and Charles Duke will be returning to the Descartes Plateau to collect more rock and soil samples for scientists on Earth. Sound of the last tone, it will be 3 o'clock Central European time. Weekend World News headlines on the hour compiled from the wires of the AP and UPI. South 16 astronauts are awake and making final preparations for their third lunar excursion. Today's five-hour expedition to the Descartes Plateau again is aimed at finding ancient lunar rocks, which may give scientists further clues to the origin of the moon as well as to the universe. World News Headlines on the Hour, compiled from the wires of the AP and UPI. The Apollo 16 astronauts have started their third and final lunar exploration about 30 minutes earlier than planned. John Young and Charles Duke climbed out of their lunar module just moments ago to finish up their scientific work in the moon's highlands. They're scheduled to blast off from the lunar surface for redocking with the command ship early tomorrow morning. It's 6 o'clock in Central Europe, and on the moon, the Apollo 16 astronauts complete their final day of experiments and rock gatherings before leaving the lunar surface for their return to Earth. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, this is Jan Wood, AFN News reporting. The Apollo 16 moon explorers are well into their final field trip on the lunar surface, Commander John Young climbed down the ladder of the lunar lander Orion at 4.35 this afternoon to start the five-hour expedition. Charles Duke followed him a few minutes later. 
The temperature on the moon's surface is 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 67 centigrade. That's 50 degrees hotter than Saturday because of the sun's angle. Their third driving excursion in the moon rover will take them more than three miles or five kilometers to North Crater and then to Smoky Mountain. Thomas Mattingly, who's orbiting overhead in the command ship Casper, surveyed the crater yesterday and described it as having open and exposed layers of rock. Young and Duke will gather some samples from the crater and plan to blast off from the Descartes Plateau at 26 minutes past 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. Link up with Casper is set for 4.17 tomorrow morning. It's 7 o'clock in Central Europe. Apollo 16 moonwalkers on the lunar surface for their final day of exploration. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. This is Jan Wood, AFN News reporting. The Apollo 16 moonwalkers have driven to the rim of the deepest crater man has ever looked into on the moon, and they are collecting rock specimens blasted out of the lunar crust. John Young and Charles Duke reached the boulder rim of 400 feet deep North Ray Crater after a 35-minute, three-mile drive from their lunar lander. Today's outing on the moon is their third and final surface excursion. Both men are described as more business-like and less jocular than on their other two trips. North Ray Crater has an estimated diameter of 2,700 feet. It's 8 o'clock in Central Europe. In West Germany, computer projections show Chancellor Willy Brandt's Social Democrats being defeated in the important bottom Württemberg election. <laughs> AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, this is Jan Wood, AFN News reporting. In astronauts, Charles Duke and John Young are winding up their final day of moon exploration. They drove to a deep crater on the lunar surface to collect rocks blasted out of the lunar crust by volcanoes or meteors. They reported seeing huge boulders, some as high as their heads, and they said they could not see the bottom of the 400 feet deep North Ray Crater. The astronauts reached the crater after a 35-minute, three-mile drive in their lunar buggy. Duke and Young will re-enter their lunar lander in about one hour and 30 minutes from now, and then they'll lift off at 2.26 tomorrow morning, Central European time. They are recoupled with the mothership Casper at 4.17 a.m. to begin their long way back to Earth. Back in Central Europe, in bottom Württemberg, West Germany, the opposition Christian Democrats Joe Chancellor Brandt's efforts to sign non-aggression pacts with Moscow and Warsaw. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, this is Jan Wood, AFN News reporting. John Young and Charles Duke went for a Sunday drive on the moon today, and at one point, Young acted like a Sunday driver in the state and got a warning from controllers at Houston. Young radioed, we just set a new world speed record, Houston, 17 kilometers per hour on the moon. That's just over 10 statute miles per hour, and Houston said, let's not set any more records. The astronauts got a 30-minute head start on their schedule today. When they left their lander Orion, they drove to North Ray Crater, which is 400 feet deep. Their mission there was to gather more lunar rocks and samples. They said they passed huge boulders, some as high as their heads, and after viewing the crater, they moved on to their second stop on the five-hour excursion. That was station number 12. It also is located on the rim of the crater. When today's exploration is finished, in about 30 minutes from now, the astronauts will return to their lander, pack up all their gear, and get ready to blast off and link up with Thomas Mattingly in the commander ship Casper. It's six o'clock in Central Europe, a new North Vietnamese tank assault in the central highlands of South Vietnam. <laughs> AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good morning, Gary Bautel reporting. Charles Duke blasted off the moon last night and rejoined their companion, Ken Mattingly, ending a record stay on the moon. 
The Apollo 16 astronauts lifted off the moon with ease. A remote-controlled television camera attached to their moon rover beamed back to Earth clear color pictures of the liftoff. Seven minutes later, ten miles above the lunar surface, they were in moon orbit. They then then docked with the command ship Casper and have occupied themselves since then, moving all their rock and soil samples, tools and the like, into the command ship. The lunar module is to be released later, sent crashing into the moon. And the spacemen will begin their nearly three-day trek to a touchdown site in the Pacific Ocean that splashdown scheduled for late Thursday. It's 7 o'clock in Central Europe. B-52 is back over North Vietnam. North Vietnamese back on the move in the south. Apollo 16 modules linked up in moon orbit and political dilemma for West German Chancellor Braun. The 7 o'clock report, a comprehensive summary of world news and sports developments compiled from the wires of the AP and UPI with reports from the major American networks. Good morning, Mr. Milt Fullerton in Frankfurt. 16 command and lunar modules have been reunited in moon orbit. Two capsules were linked up a short while ago, and the three spacemen have been busy shifting gear and moon samples into the command ship prior to getting some sleep. Later, they'll jettison the lunar module. They'll leave moon orbit and head back to Earth. The docking of the ship was accomplished shortly after 4.30 a.m. Central European time. Earlier, the two moonwalking members of the Apollo 16 team, John Young and Charles Duke, carried out a faultless blast off from the moon. Seven minutes after the smooth lift off from the Descartes mountain range, the Orion moon lander, with 50 more pounds of moon samples and plans, slipped into orbit around the moon and began the game of catch-up, their target being the command module Casper, which is piloted by Tom Mattingly. Overall, Earthbound scientists say the Apollo 16 mission accomplished all that it was supposed to, despite several mechanical and technical problems, which cut short some of the experiments and threatened cancellation a couple of times of the moon landing itself. Apollo 16 was a record-setting mission in many ways. For instance, astronauts Young and Duke set a new record for total time on the moon, 71 hours, 2 minutes, total time exploring the moon, 20 hours, 14 minutes, the longest single moonwalk, 7 hours, 23 minutes, 26 seconds, the fastest drive in a moon buggy, 11 miles an hour, and finally, the largest payload of moon rock and soil samples ever, about 245 pounds worth. in Central Europe, the North Vietnamese attacked Dok Tho, Khan Tum, and other targets in the Central Highlands. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good afternoon, Gary Bartell reporting. Sixteen astronauts are in the middle of a sleep period at their, as their spacecraft orbits the moon. Later today, they will jettison the lunar landing craft, launch a scientific satellite around the moon, and then fire their main engine for two and a half minutes to launch the command ship out of lunar orbit and send it on its way home. Splashdown in the Pacific is scheduled for Thursday. Central European time is 5 o'clock. Communist forces knock out two more government fire bases in the central highlands of South Vietnam. AFN News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good afternoon, this is Bob Andresen in Frankfurt. It's 6 o'clock in Central Europe. The Communists launch heavy attacks in South Vietnam's Central Highlands as B-52 bombers hit the north again. Two closely watched primary elections in America tomorrow and the Apollo 16 orbits the moon in preparation for a return to Earth. The 6 o'clock report, an expanded summary of world developments with Today in Europe, compiled from the wires of the AP and UPI, including reports from the major American networks.
Good evening. I'm David Minak in Franklin. Think of their historic mission, with which scientists say may yield the richest scientific bounty of any of the previous American moon landings. Astronauts Young, Duke, and Mattingly will continue to orbit the moon until shortly before 11 o'clock tonight. Mattingly then will fire the rocket of the command ship, blasting the Apollo 16 out of lunar gravity and back toward Earth. CBS correspondent Reed Collins has a report about the results of their three lunar explorations. Young and Duke zipped off the moon last night, and two hours later their lamb, Orion, was drifting outside the command ship's window. Ken Mattingly drove the command craft named Casper toward the LEM. There we go. Took a couple extra work to get you. Okay, are you free? Looking pretty fair. How about if I just retract you? I believe we're there. Casper's captured Orion. And so the craft were joined again, and Young and Duke transferred a record haul of 245 pounds of moon rock and soil back to the mothership. They had spent nearly 20 hours and 15 minutes out on the surface of the moon in three EVAs. Behind, they left the experiment station that will continue sending information back to Earth. Today, they'll send the ascent stage of the LEM crashing back onto the moon. They'll put a little sub-satellite spinning around the moon. And finally, this evening, they'll fire the service engine that sends them back toward Earth. A voyage of 66 hours to the South Pacific and home. Reed Collins, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York. It's 8 o'clock in Central Europe, and in Washington, the Supreme Court hangs down a number of rulings. AFM News, from the wires of the AP and UPI. Good evening, this is Dan Allen reporting. Two astronauts are less than three hours from the scheduled firing of their rocket in the command ship, taking them out of lunar orbit and back toward Earth. CBS correspondent Dale Vaughn reports that the astronauts are anxious to return and celebrate their successful mission on the moon. Astronauts Duke and Young spend more than 20 hours exploring the moon and are bringing back a record 245 pounds of rock and soil samples. They rejoined Ken Mattingly in the command capsule. There was congratulations from Houston Control and then talk of a celebration. This whole team setting up a well done. A good night to Earthbound controllers. Tonight is a sun sinks slowly in the west. We better find farewell to all MCC. This evening, they blast out of lunar orbit and head for home. 66 hours later, on Thursday, Apollo 16 will splash down in the Pacific. Del Juan, CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. <laughs> 